The chair now calls up Amendment 5297 to 5296. The chair recognizes the senator from Story, Senator Kornbach, for opening remarks on Amendment 5297 to Amendment 5296. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, this amendment uh, provides some startup uh, planning money uh, as requested by Iowa State University for the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory Project. Just to give you a little bit of background on that, uh, I know that a number of us uh, toured the facility up there back in January, and others have been there at other times. Uh, it really is quite a fascinating tour to see all the scientific uh, work that they're doing there. Uh, and it's really extremely important work to the animal agriculture industry in this state. Uh, they literally are bringing in, working on hundreds of samples every day, uh, tissue samples, trying to identify diseases, trying to identify uh, new vectors that have come into the state. Um, and the work that they do uh, in identifying the, uh, uh, potential, the potential or actual disease would be critical in heading off uh, any kind of future disaster like the bird flu or God forbid that we should ever have to look at hoof and mouth disease. The sooner an outbreak of a disease like that can be identified, isolated, quarantined, you can save tens of millions if not hundreds of millions of dollars uh, damage to the animal agriculture industry. Now of course there are a few other people who benefit from that. It's all of us who eat. Because what we're talking about here is the safety of the food supply. So every food consumer here in Iowa, every food consumer across the country, because we ship our products all over this country, it is absolutely critical to the safety of that food supply. It's also critical to the strength of our export markets. You know, we've had a lot of discussion back and forth about tariff wars and tariff barriers to our exports. Uh, a lot of countries have used what are called non-tariff barriers. They make allegations about the safety of American food and use those kinds of uh, barriers as an excuse to keep out American products, because quite frankly, we're a whole lot more efficient than the farmers in most other countries. So, but we have to be able to validate the safety of the exports that we are sending them if we are going to have any hope of defeating those kinds of non-tariff barriers, preserving our export markets in, in East Asia and really around the globe. And one other thing that we need to be concerned about, we don't like to think about this a whole lot, but one thing that we do have to think about is the possibility of terrorism, all right? Some folks uh, in various countries have engaged in biological uh, weapon development, notwithstanding some treaties. Uh, in the Soviet Union, we had a treaty with them, and they went ahead and cheated on it anyway. They were assuming that we were cheating, and which we weren't. Uh, but, uh, but they went ahead and did that. Who knows what kinds of uh, uh, biological weapons they have there. We've seen, we've seen non-traditional forms of warfare uh, going on. It's not just the battlefield, it's not just missiles, it's electronic warfare and possibly uh, biological warfare. We need the facility at Iowa State to be a vital part of our national defense. It's not just the food safety, it's not just the economic viability of the animal agriculture industry, it is much, much larger than that. We have a first-rate facility there with top-flight people, but they are working under conditions that compromise both the quantity and quality of the work that they are able to do. Literally, when we went th through the tour, People were working there at their lab benches, elbow to elbow, working in very close quarters. The possibility in those kinds of situations of cross-contamination between different samples is real and tangible. And one other thing that they emphasized to us, the diagnostic lab facility that's there now, it's in the same building as the animal hospital. And they have concerns about the ventilation system, the HVAC system. 
If you have a disease sample come in and that pathogen gets airborne and circulates around that building, well, it could infect uh, animals that are in there for treatment and those animals go on home and boy, you're, instead of stopping the spread of disease, you can be a generator of the spread of disease. So they need more space to do the volume of work that they're doing. They need safer, more secure space in a separate building. The, uh, the overall cost, of the projects is $124 million, and the deal, the arrangement that had been worked out with the state was that the state would provide $100 million, $20 million a year for five years, and the university would go out and raise $24 million in donations. Now, that's a heavy lift for the university. You know that people would love, Senator Whitford, to put their name on an athletic facility or on a dorm or on a library, but who the heck wants to put their name on a disease lab? But the university's committed to doing that, to raising the $24 million, but they have to have a reliable partner. Now, the, if you look at the budget document in front of us, it doesn't say $20 million a year. It only says 12 and a half. So that's a shortfall that has to be addressed. But right now, right now, tonight, today, this coming year, we have to come up with the first $5 million. And here's why. That first $5 million is for planning money. If they can get that money to do, get underway with the planning, they tell me that they can shave a whole year off the completion timeline for getting that vital facility finished. So this is a relatively small amount of money for the longer term commitment, but it gets the project going, it gets it off the ground so that we can meet all of these multiplicity of needs. Uh, I really would encourage your support for this amendment. Is there a discussion on the amendment? The chair recognizes the senator from Buchanan, Senator C. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Kornbach, I would expect nothing less of you. I think you're, you're advocating for your university very well. I, I would take a moment, too, and explain uh, some things with that lab. Um, I just want to clarify, I think you mentioned that there was an agreement for uh, $100 million. It was a request, as, as we saw it. Um, the University of Northern Iowa had a request into us. Uh, that's my alma mater, and I would surely have loved to have funded some portion of that. Uh, we weren't any, we were unable to do that. The University of Iowa had a request for money for their library. We were unable to do that. We focused on the vet lab for the very reasons that Senator Kornbach talks about, and uh, I got to say I agree with it. Um, the amendment, however, uh, I, I want to say that we do fund uh, the initial amount that, that uh, Iowa State asked for, which uh, they did ask for $5 million. We were able to fund it for a million starting out, and, and uh, what we have in there right now is $12.5 million. Senator Kornbach's uh, amendment would take it up to seventeen five. so we're still short the $20 million they originally asked, so I don't know, does anybody want to write an amendment for $2.5 million more? That's per year, though. Um, so as much as the amendment means, and I, I, I absolutely agree wholeheartedly with Senator Kornbach on uh, the VET lab and what it's going to do, the people there that are managing it are doing a fantastic job. Um, you know, it was fun going on that tour uh, to see that, the lab and what those folks are doing. Um, it's something that Iowa needs, and we are going to fund this thing uh, through this bill. Uh, there will be opportunities, I believe, for Iowa State uh, to look for partners in it. Um, recently, I believe there was an athletic facility that was funded to the tunes of tens of millions of dollars. I know the university can raise money, and I guess that would be a challenge that every university has today. Uh, with that, I would just ask uh, that we resist this amendment, please. Seeing no further discussion, the chair recognizes the senator from Story, Senator Kornbach, for final remarks on Amendment 5297 to Amendment 5296. Well, thank you. Um, you know, it's not just advocating for the university. You're not surprised that I do that, right? It's advocating for the whole of the animal agriculture industry throughout this state. That's a $32.5 billion direct economic output per year. $32.5 billion of economic output from our animal agriculture industry. That's four and a half times the state budget. Okay, that's how much wealth, how much, uh, how much value they create each year. And the veterinary diagnostic lab, they charge for their services. They cover about 80% of their operating costs. There is a $4 million annual subsidy for the operating costs from the state. 
but the uh, estimated tax receipts, just the tax receipts alone from this expanded facility, would pay back the $124 million in just two years. Okay, the $124 million facility would bring in enough in tax receipts to pay back the cost in two years, if those are normal years. If you have an outbreak, if you had an outbreak, that would repay itself in less than one year. So this is a, this is a terrific investment for all kinds of reasons, but just very narrowly in terms of the immediate payback uh, to the state Boy, where else can you get that kind of return on investment? And at the same time, protecting farmers and the health, economic health of our rural communities, protecting our food supply, contributing to the nation's national security. Uh, this is a terrific investment. One million dollars is nice, but five million dollars is what's needed to get the job done. I move the amendment. The senator from Story moves the adoption of Amendment 5297 to Amendment 5296. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. No. The chair is in doubt and asks for a division. The chair is no longer in doubt. The amendment is defeated.